hip arthritis, hip replacement. In many people, it's preventable. Fifteen years ago, I was diagnosed with a hip arthritis from an x-ray. Ever since then, I've been very interested in the topic. As a veterinarian, I studied the human physiotherapy research papers. As a Pilates instructor, I studied the moves that would help this. A lot of these moves are based on the four basic pre-civilization movement patterns that keep hip arthritis to a very low level in so-called primitive people. The four movement patterns that prevent hip arthritis are deep squat, sitting cross-legged, walking up and down hills, and walking over rough ground and we'll find a lot of the movements I will now show you mimic these things. It's very important to have an active gluteus maximus. I'll show you a little bit of the dynamics. Imagine the gluteus maximus is like the stretch band running from the sacrum to the side of the thigh. I'm going to stretch it out to put some tension on it. That stretch band now pulls the top of the thigh backwards it pulls the ball of the socket back into the hip socket. So the gluteus maximus helps the ball stay back and deep in the socket where there's lots of joint surface and very little chance of doing any damage. We need a strong active gluteus maximus. In modern civilization this does not happen. The other thing we need is to have smooth and controlled movement in and around the hip joint. If we're stepping over things we want to know that the belt line is more or less horizontal and that everything's smooth and coordinated. In walking, if for example we've got to duck down under a branch, we want to know the belt line's horizontal, that the knee's going forward over the middle of the foot, it's not doing this horrible hip damaging move like this, there. And so there's a lot of things that we're going to do that look very similar to the four basic movement patterns of pre-civilization that prevent hip arthritis. Remember what they were? Deep squat, cross-legged sitting, and stepping over rough ground, and up and down hills. The first movement pattern, rocking back with a flat back. You'll notice that my back is not rounded, it's flat. If you have a bad hip, you will probably want to round your back. If you have a bad hip, this is a safe place to push your back down. And we just rock back forward and back. The back flattens and sinks. This is stretching out the glutes and it's encouraging them to work. Let's make the glutes work a little more. Squeeze. This is your buns of steel. Like squeeze to push forward. Smoothly back. Your back's low. Squeeze to push forward. The next exercise is about getting a strong lumbar pelvic stability, strong tummy, strong hip muscles. Walk forward into a bent knee push-up. The heels push together. Maybe you can't go down very low. Push the heels. Push the heels. Think about push the heels. For the third exercise, we put a towel here. So it's at the top of the thigh. This will push the thigh backwards as we're lying on our top. So now, the ball of the femur is being pushed upwards into the depths of the hip socket. It's simply squeeze the glute and lift the leg. Squeeze the glute and lift the leg. We can get a good idea of the difference between a jelly glute and a squeeze glute. So you lift with a bun of steel. This is very, very therapeutic and you can get a good idea of what it means to squeeze 
glute. Consciously squeezing the glute muscle will massively improve its strength, its size, and its willingness to do its job of protecting the hip joint. The chair is a useful instrument for improving your hips. The following exercises, a lot of them there's very little movement. We'll be taking a hold where muscles are contracting, the muscles will strengthen up. Because there's no movement, there's no graunching of hip joint parts one against the other. So there's no hip joint damage happening. This is reverse chair sit. Are you able to sit with your back up? Nice and tall. Rounded back is not going to get the right movement happening. Sit tall and come up slowly and then come down to a point where you can hold. Get your hands relaxed. You can move a hand off or in your thigh, or, but just get nice and relaxed there. Now check that the glutes are squeezing. Hmm, they need a little more squeeze. So squeeze, one, two, three, and relax. Squeeze, one, two, three, and relax. If we can go lower, squeeze, one, two, three, feels like a jockey up in stirrups. Squeeze, one, two, three, and relax. Squeeze, one, two, three, and relax. You can even go this way. Squeeze and relax. This is actually a nice way to do things. You see my back is still very straight. Squeeze and relax. And again, squeeze and relax. The split squat is where we split one leg back and one forward. It's a squat. We're going up and down. We're not going forward. Keep the weight towards the back leg and think about squeezing the glute muscle. Squeeze and hold and just hold it. And again, squeeze and come up. Down we go. Squeeze. And relax and squeeze and come up. If you can go lower, then by all means do so, but squeeze the glute. For the next exercise, we turn the chair into a picket fence. Can we smoothly, keeping the belt line horizontal, step forward and back over a load of picket fence? This is equivalent to a pre-civilization person walking on rough territory. And can we take the leg out the side and back, like open the gate? Of course, we're going to do this both sides and everything's smooth and coordinated. It's very important that we learn to get a thigh bone behind the body and at the same time squeeze the glute muscle. So we sink forward, sink the hips forward, get the breastbone lifting, squeeze this glute, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze and come back. We can squeeze here as well. Squeeze, 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 and then forward. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. There's a very useful stretch happening in the front at the same time. We need to be able to move the thigh bone forward, back, sideways, rotations, all sorts of movement as though stepping over rough ground. We can do this with sideline. The very first thing I'm going to do is a ITB band stretch. That's the band from runs from the knee to the top of the hip. Here it is. The lower leg is behind. We press with the elbow and we pull the ribs up. And that's causing a stretch on the side of the hip. This is a safe way to do it because the ball is being pushed deep into the socket. It's not riding up over the rim and graunching. Again, pressing with the elbow, the ribs are lifting. Feel the stretch on the side of the hip. From here we go into clamshell sideline. Put your 
arms overhead and your head is sinking onto the biceps pillow. Your ribs may lift a little. We do a in and out movement of the thigh. The knees touch, the heel touches the ankle. Relax around your neck and shoulders, the head is heavy on the biceps. We're just using a mobilization, a low load, to get the blood flowing around the rim of the socket and get you feeling control and coordination and hopefully minimal pain. So everything's coming back online and saying, well, it's all right to do this. And that's all we want to do there. And then we can take the shin vertical. The body's leaning back at 45 degrees and we just do a hold there. No movement, no hip joint parts grunting over each other. We're strengthening up the inside leg muscles. Later on we'll stretch them and massage them. And smoothly lower. That's the side line. Stretch band windscreen wiper. When I had my sore hip, with the x-ray of the hip, this was a really good stretch for getting things sorted out. First thing you'll notice is the weight of the leg is pushing the ball of the femur deep into the socket where it should be. It's not riding forward. Second thing you can notice is that there's nice smooth control. When the leg's wide, here's a control facet. There's a challenge for this hip to lift up but keep it down, the body squared off like a concrete block. When you come over, we're stretching out all sorts of muscles and structures behind the hip joint. And that's a really good place to be. Uh, that's a good stretch. You'll notice the hip came up at whatever level was good. We can put a hand on this top hip and push it away from the ribs so that the ribs lift off the floor. Mmm, I could stay there for quite a while. While we're seated, we do cross-legged sitting. This may be difficult for us if we have sore hips and uh, we've never done it in our lives before. It's very easy for people in Arab countries, however, and in the East, Eastern countries and they have very little hip arthritis. They do have hip arthritis if they had genetically uh, poor hips or accidents or so on, but otherwise it's minimal. Uh, there are variations of this knee-wide position. We can sit like that. We can sit like that. Uh, we can sit in a chair. cross-legged. The acceptable ways of sitting in the chair include sitting wide. This is a great place to be if you're waiting for a cup of coffee or whatever. And uh, you can sit with your ankles crossed as long as the knees are apart. Do not, however, sit cross-legged like that because the blood's being squeezed out of the margins of the joint and there's pinching going on and without poor blood supply um, delicate joint parts can't heal so do not sit like that. So this is our westerners version of uh, chair sitting cross-legged and that will mimic what the pre-western people do. For massage work when a hip joint or any joint gets sore, uh, it tightens up the muscles around it and they get trigger points and tight bands. And also there's a degree of scar tissue where the muscles insert on the bones. 
we can massage those out and bring back the control and coordination around the joint so there's less damage likely to happen. And so massage, we can use a wall and ball. And for example, if I put that ball in the center of the hip pocket, you just bit knees, bend and put the bottom backwards, I can get a really nice massage just like that. With hip arthritis, where the ball is not securely back in the socket and doing minimal damage, it's much better to do this on the ground without any weight on it. And uh, so we'll just go on to ball and floor. We start with the back hip pocket. You can use a tennis ball, or I've got a slightly bigger ball. Here it is in the middle of the hip pocket. We just send the weight down. We're going to use a bridge. We can send a leg long and sink that hip down so it's on an angle here. You've got lots of help if you need to lift the hip. All right, so gravity hits a, small, a sore spot, and then you can always, ooh, ow, lift. There we go. That's a nice feel. Side to side, about the middle of that back hip pocket. If I move to the ball at the bottom of that back hip pocket, that's good, side to side. If I find a sore spot, it's time to stop and mass let a massage ball sink in. We go now to the top of the hip pocket. Ow, oh, ooh, right, that's good. And we just pause and let the ball sink in. It'll soften the knots, normalize them, make the muscle more functional. We need to massage right around this hip joint. Uh, so we can do the side hip now between the, the bony top of the femur and the top of the thigh, line our side. See how I've got this shin vertical? I can lift up and down. If I lift up, I can put the ball in. Now that I'm there, there we go. I can lift, I can relax and let gravity do the work. That's quite sore, but there's plenty of knots that are really worth working on this area. That's working the side hip, massaging out the knots and the muscles. We have a spot here about the opening of the front hip pocket. And that's called the tensor fasciolata muscle. We can place the ball over there. Now this time, we take that lower leg behind us and we just roll around there. Or whatever works. There we go, that's good. And let the ball sink in, try and relax. We could take that down the side of the thigh as well and that could be useful. Now, we need something for the inside leg. Uh, it's good to use a foam roller for this. This is uh, something that takes a little bit to learn, especially if you've got a saw here. But it's very, very good. Person with an end-stage hip arthritis and they're ready to go and see the surgeon, often they can't sleep because of pain in this area. Well, it's worth learning how to get this area massaged before it ever becomes a problem. So when you need the help, you know how to do it. You can also do this seated in a chair. If you have a reasonable size ball. And just get two hands on the ball, just push in. And we can lean forward and a little bit left and right. Whatever works to get that ball sinking in. Whatever works. Now, we can also get some benefit out of massaging the lower tummy and the muscles deep to there, the muscles that lift the knee. We do this by lying on our tummy. Now, we want to get the tummy muscles under stretch, so we bend the knees. That takes the hips away from the ribs. We take the shoulders and ribs up to the wall in front. And then we put the ball in. The muscles of the tummy are now under stretch. And the ball is able to push on a stretch, the muscle that's coming towards it. And put the ball down on the right at the bottom of the six pack muscle. And knees bent, ribs forward. Massaging out the knots just above the hip joint. You'd be surprised what sort of problems that can settle down. If 
finally, this looks a little weird, but it's very, very effective. And it's a lot safer than it looks. A broom, broomstick, pressing on their lower six pack muscle on this side with the leg back. And I've got to hold like so. And then we can just, don't have to push too hard. Move that stick around, left, right, up, down. Now over towards uh, the side of the six pack muscle. And there's some knots there. And that's getting into the muscle, one of the muscles that lifts the bent knee towards your chest. And we can take to the six pack muscle at the level of the tummy button, just to the side of the tummy button. And as long as there's no deep, nauseous pain, you're quite safe. The, the tummy organs squish out the way like spaghetti in, on a plate. Okay, again, ribs lift, and a little bit of stretch and tension on the tummy muscles. I want to share with you this concept of time of life continuum for hip arthritis. You start out at naught to one years of age. You might have an unsound hip because of genetics or hip dysplasia, uh, shallow hip socket. Uh, you get into childhood years, you have an accident, you fall awkwardly and you do some damage to the hip socket. And then as a teenager or a young adult, you play some ferociously damaging sports such as soccer and hockey and ice hockey and uh, that puts some damage into the rim of the hip socket and you've got muscle mass and uh, things are strong and it holds together until the day you retire suddenly the muscle mass is disappearing the nice smooth control and coordination is lost there's all sorts of jerking and jarring and pinching movements happen and lo and behold you get a pain on the inside leg it's so severe that you can't lie back in bed and get a good night's sleep, and it's time to see the hip surgeon. Time of life continuum. You needed to be doing the work to maintain your hip when you were a teenager. So that when you got to old age, you knew exactly what to do every time you felt a hip niggle. And uh, there we go. Hip arthritis, hip replacement, in many people, it's preventable. Enjoy.